In Utah and all across the country, some communities are often in the spotlight and some others are not. And that's why Fox 13 has launched a new series of stories that we call Two Americas. Now in tonight's installment, we're going to take you to Cache County where farmers there are grappling with whether or not they keep working their land or they sell it to meet the demand for new housing. Here's Fox 13's Ben Winslow. John Mickle's family farm overlooks the Cache Valley. And I've been here my entire life. But down the road, development is moving in. Many farmers are selling out. Mickle says he loses as much as 50 acres a year of farmland to lease. It's painful to see a productive piece of ag land go under. There are other places where we could guide development, but we seem to be unwilling to accomplish that. Urban encroachment on farmland is something Utah's Department of Agriculture and Food is becoming increasingly concerned about. With people moving in, people staying in the state to work, with our economy booming the way it is, of course we're seeing a lot of need for housing. The state agriculture commissioner himself, a Cache County farmer, says it's happening all over Utah. We're hearing stories of producers who are just ready to sell and develop their property, especially along the Wasatch Front. According to data kept by the Utah Department of Agriculture and Food, the number of farms in the state has been fluctuating since 2010. Right now, the agency says there are 18,409 farms. The size of those farms has been shrinking in recent years. A report by Utah State University's Extension Service found that since 2012, while the number of farms and the value of their lands went up, the average farm size is down. Utah's five most urban counties have only 6% of the state's total farmland, but they make up 32% of the state's crop cash receipts and nearly 30% of all the farms in the state. It's a very important issue where we need to have food production close to our cities or urban areas. The agency says agricultural land preservation is a priority, but as land prices rise, more small family farms are pushed out. And once agricultural land is lost to development, it can't be regained. You have to realize, Ben, that uh, farmland is no longer farmland. It's become a commodity. And uh, people get rich playing with that commodity. But as a result of that, we have a diminishment of our arable ag land, which people don't seem to realize that that six inches of crust on the earth is what sustains all of us. In turn, that can impact the price you pay for food as transportation costs increase to make up for longer distances. But when this is gone, the grocery store has no supply chain. Have you faced pressure to sell your land? Absolutely, yeah. Given its heavy reliance on agriculture, urban development is a big topic in Cache County. The area is feeling the demands. We're at 1.7% unemployment. That's indicative of just how strong the labor market is, lowest in the state. Cache County leaders are having policy discussions right now about how to balance growth and protection of agricultural areas and where development should go. We're causing the very strain that we're uneasy about. As part of the growth the Cache Valley is experiencing right now, the county government is formulating a general plan. It'll lay a groundwork for decades to come for planning, zoning, and other needs. We implore everybody, now's the time to give your two cents on how you'd like your county and city leaders to develop over the next 10 and 20 years, right? Now is the time to give your voice and input to make sure that we keep the things you want kept while still acknowledging we've got to grow. Cache County is also exploring other ideas, including agriculture preservation measures. It identifies the property owners, which might be an aging uh, you know, family farm right now who's considering, hey, should I sell out? Should I provide this land for one final crop of homes? Um, or is there some sort of cultural protection in place? It might be an ag zone. It might be uh, a changing to certain land uses that allow us to go from livestock production to, uh, you know, it, it could be something like cannabis or, or even grapes for a winery, which are real topics here. That's what the Mickle family's farm has recently done. This historic barn hosts weddings, and part of the crop is now winemaking grapes. It's a change from our normal cropping operation. We're seeing a lot more interest in agritourism in the state which is a, is a good thing. State agriculture officials would also like to see the legislature provide some funding to help secure conservation easements to keep open spaces open. Do we value ag land? And if we do, do we value it enough to, to use our own public funding 
to purchase those development rights from, from the farmer. But the state also acknowledges the farmer has every right to sell their property. We're not going to go tell a farmer how he... Uh, how he sells his property, who he sells his property to. Cash County's economic development director believes they can find a balance. We can have a successful blend of having some open spaces and keeping our farms active and alive while still acknowledging we need growth for the vitality of our economy and the vibrancy of our community. I think the people who watch this need to ask some serious questions. Where is this all taking us? John Mickle says it may be too late. And he says everyone should consider what happens when farmland is gone. When this is covered in houses, is that a more attractive, attractive than it is now? Or do we like it the way it is now? Is this an asset that blesses society? In Logan, Ben Winslow, Fox 13 News, Utah.